with T Quilts and I'm here to do this month's block assignment for the Quilters Patch which is this book here and I keep getting requests for where you can purchase this book you can go to Connecting Threads at www.connectingthreads.com and you can purchase this book most times they have their books at 40% off so it was actually a great purchase. The original price of this book is $27.95. We are now on month number eight and we are working on the Holly Hawk block. And I am going to show you a picture of it, but I'm just going to try to keep the instructions from showing in the video. If you want to participate in this sew along, please go to Connecting Threads and purchase a book. But got a lot of light here. So this is what the quilt block looks like. In the previous months, we had to do two blocks, but this month we're making a block that's 12 and a half by 24 and a half, and we only have to make one of this particular block. So let me show you what fabrics I am using for my pieces, and we'll start with that. So I have all of my pieces cut. And when I cut my pieces, I actually will label them with masking tape identifiers according to how she labeled them in the quote block instructions. And I like doing that because when you have a lot of pieces that are like similar sizes, they're like a quarter of an inch difference, then I like to have everything marked so that I'm not spending my time as um sewing the block together making additional pieces so here I have my background and I use kind of a meandering stitch pattern and then I use various greens for my foliage and I am going to move this out so I can show you what I'm using for my flowers so to make the flowers and let me show you this unit again so this here is what we're actually making and so we are having to make our flower with these circles and they're like some of them have four different fabrics and then some of them up here have just one fabric so you actually are told to use a pattern for that and she gives that to you in the instruction booklet here and I decided not to do it the way that the instructions are telling you and she's saying basically just use any method of applique that you like and then if you use the template then you have it in the book so you make a template pattern so i opted to do something a little differently so these i cut six inch background squares so we need we need 20 of those segments that i showed you in the book and so what I did was I made, instead of cutting all the individual little small squares she told me to cut, I cut five six inch squares. Now when I do five six inch squares, I'm going to be cutting them into fours and then I will have 20 pieces. So I will have two left over. But what I like to do is with my background fabrics, I like to take them and fold them in half because I want to know where my middle is. And then I will fold it in half again. So now I know where my middle is on all four sides of the square. So I'll have something like that. And then with my flower fabrics, I actually picked five fabrics and I only have one of them that I haven't done anything with yet. And I took it and I used a four and a half inch circle, used it to trace around the outside edge. And then I will use scissors to cut that out. And you don't have to be exact here when you're cutting with this particular method. I'm actually doing the freezer paper applique method 
but I'm not using glue or starch. I'm just going to use my mini iron that I have heating up here to my left as well. So now that I have my circle cut out, the next thing that I want to do is take my circle, fold it in half on all fours, press the seam in, and then do the exact same thing as I did for my background. Now the only thing that's different on this one is that I want to make sure I don't when I line this up to my background, I can see it. So I am going to take something that I can see and mark at least a half inch line. Now, if you want, you can mark the entire line because we're going to be cutting on those later. So it's not like it will show in your project, but I'm okay with just marking a half inch or more. So I'm marking about three eighths of an inch. And I'm hoping you can see the marks. Okay, so then once I do that, I need some freezer paper because it's freezer paper applique. So I'm just going to take that and put it aside for now. And what I like to do is press two layers of freezer paper together. And then for this circle, I need to draw a four inch circle for my pattern. So you get the idea, you would actually cut the actual circle out. Then once I cut that circle out, I have my shiny side of my freezer paper up. It is up to, and then I have my right side showing on the opposite side. And I just have a pin in the middle to just hold it in place. And then what I want to do is use my mini iron And I am going to actually press the seam up around the edge. And it's actually harder to start. And then once you get going, it's pretty easy from there. And I'm just using my iron to push the fabric into the onto the actual freezer paper. So our next step is to put the circle on top of our background piece. So I want to line up my marks that I have and the reason why I made those marks at least a half inch or more is because now I can see them to line them up on the act with the actual lines on the side of my square where I press for my centers and from here I am just going to put a pin on top just to hold it oops I forgot to take my pin out <laughs> I'm going to put a pin to hold it on top and then I'm going to take additional pins and pin underneath I find that when I pin from underneath that my thread when I'm doing the hand sewing does not get caught in the pins so that's why I'm pinning on the underside and making sure that my marks still line up I can now take my pen out of the top and if I like I can go ahead and press this to the background because in the center it will stick because that freezer paper is shiny side up on the back side 
so it will stick. Everything but that quarter inch around the edge. And then I'm just going to let this sit for a second. The next thing you want to do is have some coordinating thread colors. So I'm using pinks and reds for my hollyhock flowers. So I pull some coordinating thread that works with my pieces. I also have a hand sewing needle and I will just pull off a piece of thread here while that's still cooling. And I'll go ahead and just put a knot in one end. There you go. And I need a needle. So for this next step, I want to just go behind my applique piece. I am going to stick my pin just underneath and come out along the edge of this applique pull my needle through and what I'm doing is just burying my knot and then from here I am going to do some hand applique stitches to attach my circle to the background and I'm actually going to stitch all the way around some people like to stitch and just leave a little bit of it open and then they release their freezer paper and take their piece out at that point but I'm going to show you how I actually pull mine out. So you just take very tiny little applique stitches all the way around the piece. So I'm not going to sit here and sew the entire thing for you. But I will show you how my stitches look from the underside and I'm hoping you can see that. And I have one that I've already completed and I just want to show you how I end it off. So this is my piece. I have just a tiny bit of thread on my needle because I'm almost done. You can see I'm hoping some of the stitches on the back. And all I want to do now is just take from my last stitch, I just want to take this needle and push it straight back into the backing. So I'm hoping you can see the needle. So to finish this off, I am going to do a knot. I'm going to wrap around my needle about two or three times. I'm going to do three. I'm going to pull the needle down to the base holding the thread and then when I just pull it through I'm holding the thread and it will make a knot and then I can also do that again and then just clip my thread so that's how I end with that part and next we have to figure out how to get our paper out. You can also reuse this paper more than once. You can use it until there. You can use it until it will no longer stick. So I did iron my fabric to the back of here. So now I just need to grip and pull apart to get some space in between. So you could skip the section of ironing it down, but I like to just make sure nothing is moving on me when I'm doing the hand work. It just makes it a lot easier. So then I'm just cutting through my background fabric a little slit. So I have a slit now right here. And what I want to do is follow this slit and just cut approximately a quarter of an inch seam. Doesn't have to be exact. Everything is already pre-sewn, so we don't really have to worry about all of that. So then I have this center out, and now I can lift under 
and pull out my freezer paper applique and actually reuse this in another circle. So this is what I have. Let me show you the back side again. So this is my back with the pink coming through and then I have the front. Now what I need to do is cut this into quarters. I'm back with all four of my circles applique. I already cut this one and trimmed it to size. So I just wanted to show you that I actually use the marks on the block to trim. And you're basically just lining up your ruler on the fold lines and the marks and then just cutting the block into four pieces now please note that you can do any other method of applique that you like for this block this is just the method that i chose because i want all of my seams turned under you can also do raw edge applique and make this go even quicker so i will square those up later and on this red block here i've got little white marks but i knew they wouldn't show up for camera but they're there <laughs> and so I am going to go ahead and piece this block together because the rest of this block is traditional piecing according to the instructions. She has very good instructions in this book. I haven't found any mistakes in, in the instructions as well. So it's a great book to purchase. So I will see you with my completed block. I'm going to start working on this section by section and I'll be back. I'm back with my hollyhock block and this block sewed together pretty easily if you just follow the instructions in the book. My only tip would be to lay out the complete block before you start sewing so you'll know where you want your fabrics to be placed. Otherwise, it's just going to be a random thing happening by the way that they're pieced. If you just follow the instructions, they're correct. Everything's great. It's just that if you want to plan where you want to put particular flat fabrics, then I would recommend that you lay out your entire block before you start sewing. So that's it for this video. I'll see you next month with the next block. And Thank you.